As we discussed in the last video, the dividend discount model could be used to come up with a valuation for a firm based on the amount of dividends that we expect that the firm is going to issue over time. Right? So we can value the firm as just this stream into the future of dividend payments that we will discount back to their present value. But there's a couple issues with this, and one being that it's difficult to forecast dividends correctly, but also there are several things that are under managerial discretion that will actually affect uh, the dividend discount model. So let's jump into an example and we'll take a look at this. So let's say that you're trying to come up with a valuation of ABC Motors. So ABC Motors has come up with a flying car, uh, they're really excited about their product. They're they're ready to launch this new flying car. And you're saying, how do I value? How do I value this firm? They're going public, and 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 you're trying to come up with a valuation. So one thing you can do is you can just use the dividend discount model. And I'm I'm just going to write it. Let me put it. Let me put it right here. So we'll say that the share price is going to be equal to the dividend, the annual dividend, over the cost of equity. And this R sub E here minus the growth rate. So we've got all this information here. I'm not going to go over the model again. Check out our last video if you haven't watched it. Uh, but our dividend payout right up here, that's going to be 50 cents a share, right? So now I just, I'm just going to plug in the numbers. So we're going to have that's equal to 50 cents, right? Over, now we've got our cost of equity capital right there. And that is 14%, so that's 0.14 minus 0.11, that 11% of our forecasted growth. So now we've got 0.5 over 0.03, which is going to give us a share price. Make sure I got plenty of space here. Share price of $16.67. This is rounded. So this is going to be our share price for ABC Motors based on the dividend discount model. So what are the issues that we face here? Well, one is if we've got this growth rate, if we have some kind of a problem, let's say, for example, let's say that this growth rate was, uh, let's say it was 8%. So 8% instead of 11%. Well, then this right here is going to be 0 0.08. And then this here is going to be 0 0.06. So what are we going to end up with? We're going to end up with a valuation of $8.33 a share. So this is half, right, of this. So now we've got, we basically lost 50% of the value. All we have was a 3% difference in the forecasted dividend growth. But this is actually, this is the least of our problems in the sense with the, the dividend discount model. We've also got uh, several issues uh, regarding our dividend forecast other than just making a mistake right this I'm just kind of assuming here that we just you know made some kind of mistake about what our growth is going to be but also we have to understand that this forecast is a function of of earnings which are in turn earnings are a function of interest expense right so what if the firm decides you know what we're going to go out and get get a bunch of of leverage, we're going to borrow a lot. That affects interest expense, which in turn affects earnings, and that's going to affect our growth rate. Now, the dividend payout rate is also a function, uh, not not of interest expense or borrowing, but now we're thinking of a function of share repurchases. So when we talk about share repurchases, we're talking about the firm buying back its own stock. And so if the firm has a certain dividend, and then it actually goes in and repurchases a lot of its stock, that's going to actually increase the dividend payout, assuming the dividend remains constant, right? And also share repurchases are just going to affect the number of shares outstanding. So all three, what these have in common is that they are subject to discretion. And it's discretion on the part of the managers. We don't know what the managers are going to do, right? We're we're trying to look into the future with the dividend discount model and come up with a growth rate and, and forecast these dividends that the firm is going to be spitting out, right? But we don't even know, not only are we going to have difficulties just coming up with this growth rate and how the firm will organically grow, but we also don't know what the behavior is going to be of managers with vis-a-vis -vis these three items right here. And so what people have done, they actually come up with some alternative models to kind of avoid these issues of just focusing on dividends and dividend growth 
And we can actually look at, for example, the total payout model. And what they mean by total payout in this, this alternative model is they're saying we're going to look at dividends and share repurchases, right? Because we're not, we're not factoring in share repurchases above, right? When we're looking at the dividend discount model here, when we're, we're discounting these dividends, we're not even taking into consideration share, share repurchases, which affect both these things right here, the number of shares outstanding and the dividend payout rate. And so the total payout model, we're going to say look at all distributions to equity holders, dividends and share repurchases. And then there's also the discounted cash flow model. We're, with that model, we're actually going to be looking at cash flows, not just to equity holders, right? Because these dividends and share repurchases, that's nice. It's expanding on the dividend discount model, but still, that's just to equity holders. What we're going to do with dis dividend, uh, excuse me, discounted cash flow model, we look at cash flow to both debt and equity holders. And what does that do? You might say, well, what is the advantage of that? Well, now we can ignore the effect of the firm's financing decision. So when we think about financing, we think about how much the firm is going to borrow and that's going to affect obviously we talked about interest expense which is going to affect earnings and so we can use the discounted cash flow model where we just discount the free cash flow uh, of the firm and then we can go and say all right now we've kind of accounted for any borrowing decisions that the firm might make